What is up guys, it is Boston McManus here and today I want to do a video on the Alienware 17. This is the 2014 edition. I purchased this about, uh, I think it was July 2014 while I was still deployed in Afghanistan. Um, I've been using this for quite a while now. I've already disassembled it once because I have uh, three different hard drives in here which I will show you guys all three of those hard drives. I also put in more of my own custom RAM in here, which was the uh, G-Skill Ripjaw RAM from the Lenovo Y510P. So without further ado, let's go ahead and tear into this thing. So first thing you want to do is make sure it is powered off and then flip it over. Flip it over on the back, you will see four screws, one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. You want to remove all four of those screws and then the front lid just slips off. Take out the uh, screws because if you don't remove the screws it will not slide forward as easily. After you remove those screws, slide the panel forward towards the front of the computer away from the exhaust ports back here and then just lift straight up. And then that is the removal of the lid. Alienware has made it very easy for you to remove the lid there. As you can see, there's foam right here for your hard drive, one of your hard drives. Uh, there's mesh right here, which covers the second hard drive. So that gets air to that hard drive. And then there's a bunch of mesh right here. All of this mesh right here is for the intakes of the two fans. As you can see, it is a tad bit dusty. Uh, I like to take it apart like this every once in a while and just give it a good cleaning. But as far as that goes, I will show you guys how to start disassembling this laptop. Now, first things first, you want to remove the battery, which is right here. So you just pull this connector off, just like so, and then you remove the two batteries, uh, screws right here. The two battery screws will say M2.5. After you've removed those two screws, it's just as simple as lifting up, and then there's your battery assembly right there. Very small, very compact. It's basically two batteries put together under one. And as always, keep the screws with the original component, that way you know what goes to what, because there will be a lot of screws for this disassembly. Secondly, we will take out the RAM because the RAM is the easiest thing to take out. This is two sticks. The other two sticks are on the opposite side of the motherboard, which you all will see later. So first, you just pull these two tabs on the side and your RAM lifts up, just like in every other laptop that's out there. Same thing with the bottom stick. Pull it out like so, and then your RAM module will come out, just like every other laptop out there. Next, we will take out my solid state drive, which is over here in the corner. There's four screws connecting this in. One, two, three, four. Alrighty, let's remove those screws. After you have removed those four screws, it was just as simple as lifting this piece of tape right here and then pulling straight up and your connector should come out. Sometimes it doesn't really want to. It depends on how this thing is seated in there. It's designed so that way the connector is supposed to pop out. Sometimes what I found you have to do is you have to pull it up at an angle like this and pull out like that. That is not how the hard drive is supposed to come out. It's actually supposed to come out with this connector right here, but I prefer the other way because as you see it the little connector part that goes into the lap laptop is just a 90 degree connector it just converts the connection into 90 degrees straight down instead of straight out it goes on like that well as you pull on this connector it kind of torques down on the SATA connectors right there so I don't like to pull it straight out because this pulls out a lot easier than it pulling straight up from the computer. Pulling it straight up from the computer, it's a lot tighter in this connector than it is from the hard drive to the actual converter. 
So after that's done, remember leave all your screws with the component off to the side. And then that is how you take out the hard drive bay over here. This is the HDD2 hard drive bay. Now we will take out the HDD1 hard drive bay. As you can see right here, there is eight screws on top. Four of these screws are to hold the hard drive in the cage and then the four outer screws right here, 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 and here are what actually hold the hard drive into the computer. After you've removed all the screws, same thing as the other one, again just pull on the back, lift it up a tiny bit, and pull backwards like that, and then it separates the connector. This is the hard drive that I have in here. It is a Western Digital 1 terabyte blue edition. Uh, this is just my storage media drive. This is what I use to store the video editing footage and my downloads and everything like that. My games stay on the solid state drive that you saw me take out earlier and that is the Corsair Force GS. I love this hard drive. This is what I had in the Y5 10P. It is a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second SSD. So that is what I use for that one. After you're done with that, you can move on to pretty much whatever you want to. We will move on for the purposes of this video, the Wi-Fi card, which is right here. You do not need to remove this in order to take apart the laptop, but I'll just do it just in case. You guys seem to really like the removal of the Wi-Fi card and the Wi-Fi 10P because it had issues for some of you, so I will show you that. So it is the same as any other laptop. You just pull up on the cable right there. I like to pull them out of the way. Pull up on the other cable. Like so. And it will disconnect very easily. And then there is one screw. You remove that. It will come up to you at a little bit of an angle. And then you remove it like so. And there's that little screw I was telling you guys about. Next, we will move on to the CD, DVD, Blu-ray drive. So for this, there's four screws. One, two, three, four. And there's also a connector. The connector is very easy to take off. It has a plastic tab attached to the connector. You just pull straight up on that tab, and then the connector comes loose. After you've removed all four of the screws, very simple, you just pull up on the CD drive and it should pop out like so. This is your GPU heatsink right here. This is the GPU card, the graphics card right under this heatsink. It is just like RAM. Uh, I do not have any thermal paste so I will not remove this. I don't want to have to reapply thermal paste and I don't have any as of right now. So right now that's going to stay in. But this is the graphics card, it is just like RAM, once you remove this GPU, you just undo these four screws right here, very simple, and then you undo these three screws right here for the fan. Once that is done, there is a connector down here in the bottom, you want to get that connector, pull up very gently, and then the connector comes out, then you want to undo these three screws right here. After those three screws have been removed, you can pull up on the connector cable very lightly and then the fan will come out. Alright guys, next we are going to disassemble the CPU fan. Just pull up on the connector cable very carefully. And then it's removed like so. Same as the... GPU fan, just the CPU fan is just a little bit smaller, it doesn't produce as much heat as your graphics card does. And then you set that off to the side, same with your others. The great thing about these is that there are little washers on the back side of the screws so the screws will not fall out. Okay, basically every single screw you need to remove is within sight. You need to remove all the screws that have M2.5. Every screw that has M2.5 you will need to remove.
After you have finished removing all of these screws, you want to go ahead and use this part right here in the laptop to push. Just like that, the top part comes off from the bottom part. Just keep pushing, and then there you go. This is the card reader cable over here. I recommend you try and get it from the top because it's easier. You just pull the connector up and then pull the cable out and then it's just glued down. So you can just remove that glue like so. Removing the top lid is very simple. And then the top lid comes off just like that. It has a keyboard, it has a trackpad, it has a power button, it has everything inside here. And there are all your cables. This is the connector that we disconnected earlier. The SD card connector goes up to here. This is the inside of your laptop. This is where the other DIMMs of RAM are, and this is also where your M.2 SATA SSD is at. Here is your M.2 SATA. And this is the M.2 SATA SSDs. These are extremely fast because they are not limited by the old interface of the SATA 3.0 6 gigabit per second. These are actually up to 10 gigabits per second data transfer rates. Here are your other two RAM modules. These are my two 4 gig sticks made by Hynix, SK Hynix. This is the other two RAM modules that I was telling you guys about that came with my laptop. Um, this is pretty much as far as you will need to go. Reassembling, you want to start off with your RAM modules. Put them back in at an angle and push down until you hear a clip. Your M.2 SATA SSD goes right back into the slot, same as RAM. Push it down like so. And now you want to move back into putting the top cover on. The top cover is very simple to put back on. All you want to do is while you're putting it back on, here's your connector right here for the uh, SD card reader. And here is the connector back here. All you want to do is just connect that in. I like to just hold it up like this. And then you connect it down in here. Once you've got it connected back together, you want to tilt the screen back just pretty much as far as it can go because these hinges go down on it and then you slip these hinges back over and then just check all around your laptop make sure everything's fitting nice and snug and start pushing down very gently you'll hear some clicks it's just the plastic clips that help hold this thing together And then you want to begin work on putting back all the screws you guys just took out. Alright guys, so after you have finished installing all the screws back into the system and you have made sure that you have no more screws left anywhere that can go to these parts, you want to go ahead and redo the connector right here. Next, you want to go ahead and reinstall your Wi-Fi card right here.
After you're done with that, we move on to the second hard drive bay. After you're done with that, you want to go ahead and get the battery. After that has been screwed into place, it is now okay to tuck your cable back down around the area and plug the power back into the laptop. Go ahead and get your lid, put it back on your laptop like so. Push from the back or the front of the laptop, whichever way you have it oriented. And then do the four screws back in their holes. And the moment of truth begins. Now we are going to see if the system will boot for the first time after reassembling this laptop. Moment of truth. All right, we're good. Everything is working great. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I will do my very best to answer all of them. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, guys.